Hey, how are you doing? This is Johannes speaking. Uh, last year, or so almost a year ago, I was in Sweden in the wintertime. And I had this idea about what I then started calling uh, suppressed extroversion. And I made a little TikTok video about this. And now, a year later, I realized that the insight I had back then has far greater implications than I first thought. So what I call suppressed extroversion is the fact that you are born as an actual extrovert, meaning you love speaking and dancing and singing and reaching out to people, uh, socializing with people. You like to look at people's faces and see how they respond to you. But your extroversion was suppressed. For example, if you've been the child of extremely introverted parents who didn't know what to do about an extroverted child, they may have told you to shut up, sit still, be quiet, don't move, go play in your room, go play outside, go play in the garage, but whatever you do, don't try to talk too much and don't run around and don't dance and don't sing. So let's, let's briefly first watch uh, my TikTok video. It's just two minutes that I made about a year ago. Uh, on a channel that no longer exists, has been taken down, too many strikes. Um, and then I want to uh, continue talking about how this concept of suppressed extroversion applies to our European civilization, our, you know, also the American culture and so on, the Western world, and what to do about it. So how do you know if you're a suppressed extrovert? Extroverts are people who love to sing and dance and they love meeting other people, including strangers, and pursue activities with them. Whereas introverted people, they love being indoors, they love reading books, for example, they love writing a lot. But what if you're an extroverted person who, as a child, was severely punished for these outward behaviors? So you are punished for dancing, you're punished for speaking up, maybe you're grounded for hanging out with too many people outdoors, right? You, you start inhibiting yourself and you adopt introverted behaviors so you also start reading books if you're not allowed to go outside with play with kids then maybe you just watch movies or you start writing as well so you adopt introverted behaviors because you've got nothing else to do now how do you know that how do you know if you're a suppressed extrovert the difference is that introverts actually really enjoy these activities they love reading books and they love watching movies silently and they don't have this need or desire to go outside and meet other people a suppressed extrovert however will always have that that nagging sense of frustration in their head like okay i'm reading a book about peter pan it's awesome but ah, oh, i wish i were outside doing these things for real with my playmates right if you have that still in adulthood that you are doing introverted activities but you keep having that stress in your head, like, damn it, I wish I were out and about with people and going on adventures and, and meeting people. That's how you know. That's how you know you are a suppressed extrovert and you really need to start going outside and be that extroverted person. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, I really love the Swedish natural world, the countryside and the forests. Sweden is, in my view, a gigantic pine tree forest with some small towns in between, plus the three big cities, Stockholm, Malmo, and uh, Gothenburg. They say, you the boy. Uh, either way, so this concept of suppressed extroversion, I hope by now it's kind of clear to you what I mean by it. You are an extrovert, but you're not allowed to behave as such, meaning you will have to hide a great chunk of your personality for the world, for the outside world, or from the world, from the outside world. And that means you're going to have stress frustration, maybe even depression, as I certainly have. In other words, there is a group of people in our world who have extreme extroversion, but who were also extremely punished for having that uh, type of behavior. And so their extroversion was then suppressed. And what I realize now is that this type of suppressed extroversion actually applies to the whole of Western civilization. I believe that around the late 19th century, that's about the year 1870, 1880, 1890, I believe Western European civilization achieved a sort of peak. We achieved peak culture, peak expression of our culture through, uh, through art, through architecture, through music, you know, Wagner's operas and so on, the, the great cathedrals we've built. In fact, colonialism itself should not be disregarded easily. It's, it was an expression of European extroversion, looking outside of ourselves 
to meet new kinds of people we'd never met before, to learn their language, to trade with them, to set up outposts in foreign nations. All of this is the extroverted soul of the European people. But in recent times, especially since 1945, the end of the last world war, the Second World War, I believe our innate extrovert tendencies have come under pressure. In fact, I believe that most Western people as a whole, as a group, as a culture, as a civilization, we are no longer at liberty to express our extreme extroversion that has been driving us for so many centuries. Some people will even say that this drive that we felt is the foundation of our religion, Christianity, for example. Now, if I apply this concept of suppressed extroversion to the European culture, what I believe happened is that at some point, Europeans began the modern age. Maybe it began 500 years ago or 1,000 years ago, or whenever the seeds were planted for this, then we entered into the colonial age, and then it really began to accelerate. Our culture, I believe, then reached its peak around the late 19th century, as I told you. Um, and from there, things went wrong. We had the First World War, the Second World War, it wrecked European economies. They had to be rebuilt. This is what they then call the German Wirtschaftswunder, the economic miracle, the revival of Germany, so to speak. And now we are stuck. Our economies have lost great power relative to the rest of the world. If, for example, there was a time when the German economy was almost 30% of the world's GDP, maybe today it's barely 4%. Uh, the U.S. economy, the, the combined Western economies used to be almost 80% of the world's GDP, and now it's definitely below 50%, dropping further to 40%. Uh, the U.S. now is the largest economy, still over 30% of the global GDP, uh, but also the U.S. seems to be stagnant. Stagflation is a, is a word most people already are familiar with. And what I want to express here is that we have become a culture of suppressed extroverts, of people who feel that we can no longer go on doing what we pleased, uh, what we love doing. We, instead of expressing ourselves through architecture, music, uh, paintings, sculptures, as we used to, right? Uh, the, the body of, uh, of, of artworks that we have left behind in our musea and in the public domain, um, it feels that it stopped there. We've hit a wall, so to speak, the wall that says to hear no further. We are, our nations are being flooded with sometimes welcome, sometimes not so welcome immigrants who bring their own culture. And it seems that they are now the ones who are more capable or more able to express their culture in our, in our lands and that we as white people are in retreat. We find ourselves in retreat with our backs against the wall. We've got nothing left to do in this world. Uh, all, all we can do at this point is keep the economy going. That's what they always say, right? Keep the economy going, keep the economy going. Uh, we need to just, I mean, if all of European existence, of all of Western civilization now amounts to no more than keeping the economy running and uh, achieving that 2% growth each year that we want out of it, Whereas on the expressive side, we've hit a dead end, then this cannot go on for long. You see, if you look carefully, you will see the, the rainbows, if you know what I mean. You see the rainbow crowd, and you see that we in the West are increasingly uh, suffering mental disorders. Uh, I believe these mental disorders come from this fact that we have hit the wall, we cannot go on, we cannot really express our soul, our true spirit. The world has been discovered by now, right? We've spoken to all the peoples, we've learned their languages, we've absorbed a lot of their culture, incorporated a lot of their cultures into ours. There is nothing more to do but one more thing. And that is this. Once you realize that your culture has exhausted itself in one direction, in the direction of European high culture, then there is one thing you can do, then we can still begin again. This is what I call the revival of the West. By this, I do not refer to some geographic area. I re really mean the revival of the spirit of the West, of our soul, 
our mind and perhaps also our body, when we reinvent ourselves and find uh, appropriate territory to do so, we may reboot ourselves. We may be that one civilization that jumped its own shadow. And by rebooting, I mean a return to tradition, a return to religious convictions, especially in Western Europe, people have become very a-religious, atheistic almost. Uh, lots of people will say that they're agnostic or they believe in something, but they don't know what. This is really bad. And I believe we need to go back to our religious roots, our rural traditionalism, and reinvent ourselves. And then we go on a path that may also last 500 years, a thousand years or more, a new path with new avenues to explore and new ways to start recreating and creating anew this European high culture now mixed in with all the others, uh, North America, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, wherever our kind has spread. We, we become, in a sense, a traditional yet also globally operating new civilization. And I'm looking forward to that, to forward to seeing new art, new music, new architecture, all in the spirit of this revival.